much. Thank you, Jody, and thank you, Antigone Rising. Weren't they fabulous? I think everyone in this room recognizes and appreciates the vit vitally important work of PFLAG. And if you're like me, I always burst into tears every time I see the PFLAG contingent during Pride. So thank you, Jody, uh, for what you do for our community and for PFLAG. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Are you having a great summit? Thank you so much for being here and for being part of the Out and Equal family. And a very special thank you to our good friends at Dell for sponsoring today's Power Lunch. Thank you. And thank you, Dell, for sending me a wonderful printer for our new office in DC. As you heard yesterday, Out and Equal now has a satellite office on the East Coast. And for years, I've gone to so many meetings in DC and New York, so it seemed the time was right to open an East Coast office. And I'm very excited to spend more time with all of our East Coast partners, so I look forward to your lunch invitations, and I'll even take invitations for cocktails, so. <laughs> well, I have to tell you that I am so happy to be here with all of you. I really love getting to talk with people during the summit and hear the stories you share with me about what you're doing in your company and in your workplace that is really making a difference and having an impact. You know, it feels especially meaningful to me to be having those conversations here in Dallas where I live some of my own story. Yesterday, I told you a little bit about my life here in Texas. At the time, I was very involved in a rather conservative church. And over the years, I got three very clear messages from the leaders of that church. One was that God is male. The second was that women are inferior to men, and in fact are second-class citizens. And the third message I got loud and clear was that homosexuality was a sin. Well, I knew in my heart of hearts that God is love and that God transcends gender. I also knew that women are powerful, as you've been able to see uh, even here on this stage. And that women are not second-class citizens unless you have a sexist perspective, which unfortunately many people at the time had. Of course, we're totally over that now. <laughs> but I have to say that homosexuality sin thing took me a really long time to overcome. So fast forward to today, we are celebrating so many amazing successes and we can now be legally married in every state in the United States, including Kentucky. <laughs> and we can be married in 23 countries around the world. And we still have our work cut out for us because there are still too many people who have been taught that homosexual homosexuality is wrong. But I have hope because of the stories of each and every one of you in this room that are changing that myth. But at the time when I was living here in Dallas, I was still trying to figure out who I am and was still very involved in the church. Well, eventually I left my job as a teacher and a guidance counselor and I moved to San Francisco, not to go to gay bars like you might think, but as Jody said, to do the next logical thing, go to theological seminary. Hello. Yes, I moved from Dallas to San Francisco to begin, begin a new career as a Presbyterian minister. And one of the most important things I learned in seminary was to trust my heart and honor my sense of spirituality and living my life with, with integrity and authenticity. And in doing that, I was finally able to come out to myself as a lesbian. Hello. And like so many of us, once I finally made that realization, I felt lighter, I felt freer and happier. Unfortunately, the Presbyterian Church was, did not quite share my joy. <laughs> and I learned rather quickly that if I chose to live my life 
with authenticity, the church would not allow me to be ordained as a minister. The very people who taught me to value the truth were now telling me to hide it. And so before my career had even started, I was forced to choose between being myself and following my dreams, a choice none of us should ever have to make. So while I was struggling with what to do um, during this difficult time in my life, I, I got to know a woman who became kind of a mentor to me, and she said to me, Celise, how is it that you plan to talk to people about love as a minister if you can't talk about who you love? And that made a lot of sense to me. I knew she was right, and it was time to come out. So I did. It was uh, very liberating personally. But professionally, I had no idea <laughs> what to do without m moving along this ordination path. So after a lot of soul searching, I decided to start an organization, building a movement around what I knew was unfair and needed to be changed. The organization was called SLUTS, which stood for Seminary Lesbians Under Theological Stress. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we were so proud. The constituency was extremely committed, but as you can imagine, rather limited. <laughs> I think there were like five of us at some point. Uh, so from there, I moved on to start Out and Equal Workplace Advocates. I found a new calling in life to ensure that no one else ever had to let go of their dreams simply because of who we are and who we love. And more than, thank you. So more than 20 years later, here I am back in Dallas, now a professional lesbian, married to my beautiful wife, Cynthia, and gathering, celebrating, and learning with all of you. So thank you so much for being here and doing this life-changing work with me and with all of us. Together, we are living proof that love wins. And again, yeah, thank you. If ever there was a year when love won, it was 2015. In the United States, marriage equality is now the law of the land, and love won not just here in the US, but around the world. In Luxembourg, Finland, Slovenia, and Greenland all passed marriage equality laws. And of course, Ireland became the first country in the world to pass marriage equality by popular vote. So many people work tirelessly to get us to this place, and everyone in this room has made a difference. Corporations have been supporting the spirit of marriage equality for years, and of course, companies do not make these decisions in a vacuum. It's really people like you doing this work every day, pushed your companies to stand up for equality and come out as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or ally and getting over 70% of the Fortune 500 to act, making marriage equality a reality. So people are now asking, what's next? Well, it's clear to me what's next, full, global, LGBT workplace equality. And we live in an interesting time. We can now be married in 23 countries around the globe, and we can still be arrested, imprisoned, and even killed in nearly 80 countries in the world. And of course, here in the United States, we can now be married in all 50 states, and we can still be fired in 28 because there's no federal law to protect us. Well, a few months ago, I was honored to testify uh, at the United States Commission on Civil Rights in Washington. For more than 50 years, this commission has been committed to shining an important spotlight on the inequalities faced by people of color and women in this country. And for the first time ever, they held a hearing on LGBT issues. And I was thrilled to be part of this historic conversation focused specifically on LGBT workplace issues and the need for a federal law to protect our community at work. I was honored to bring your voices and your stories with me to Washington and help shine a spotlight on the importance of LGBT workplace equality. Well, it was just a few months after our testimony that the Equality Act was introduced in Congress. 
1974, Bella Abzug introduced the Equality Act to add sexual orientation to the 1964 Civil Rights Act. 20 years later, the bill was stripped down to be only an employment rights bill and renamed, something we've heard a lot of, Employment Non-Discrimination Act, ENDA. And of course, as we all know, it never passed. Well, in July of this year, the Equality Act was reintroduced, this time including sexual orientation and gender identity, very important, and offering protection in <laughs> employment, housing, and public accommodation. So hope springs eternal. We look forward to the day that we can be married on Saturday and still protected at work on Monday, no matter what state we live in, and protected in all aspects of life. Well, as I learned more about the history and work of the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights, I couldn't help but think about the perseverance and tenacity of people of color and women these past 50 years as we continue our struggle for equality as a nation. Today, as we talk about and celebrate LGBT equality, it's so important to acknowledge that we are part of a much broader history and community working towards civil rights and human rights for all. We stand shoulder to shoulder with our brothers and sisters who are committed to racial equality and to gender equality. I think that we can all agree that we still have a long way to go to combat systemic racism in this country when we witness the atrocities that have happened in far too many places like Ferguson and Baltimore and Oklahoma and South Carolina. Over the past months and years, we know that we must all stand together. When we witness the pervasiveness of sexism in our society and in the world and see how violence against women is far still too, far too commonplace and that women are still treated as second-class citizens, we know we must all stand together. And as we celebrate how far we've come, we still have to acknowledge how far we still have to go. One of the most powerful moments at the hearings in Washington earlier this year was hearing from our transgender sisters and brothers as they talked about the dire need for transgender policies and protections in federal legislation. When we witness the pervasiveness of violence and murder perpetrated on transgender people, particularly trans women of color. We must know we must all stand together. Well, I was fortunate uh, recently to be invited to attend the ESPY Awards in Los Angeles, thanks to Disney and ESPN, and I will never forget watching Caitlyn Jenner win the Arthur Ashe Award for Courage. That one moment, that one speech, change the world. We all know the power of sharing our personal stories and Caitlin's bravery, authenticity, and openness to invite all of us into her story. It brought transgender lives into the living rooms of so many people in our country and around the world who can now say what many of us in this room have long been able to say is that I know, admire, respect someone who's transgender. And that moment of recognition is the moment we're able to change hearts and minds and win real equality. So again, it's the stories of each and every one of you in this room that is changing the world, that has won marriage equality, and is moving the needle on transgender visibility. And together, we are changing the world on behalf of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community. Now, global workplace Equality is really the cornerstone of our work at Out and Equal. Over the years, we have worked with our friends and colleagues around the world on behalf of our community. For many years, we've worked with Yvonne and Igor in Italy to support the work of Parks, leading companies to be more inclusive of the LGBT community in Italy. We support our colleagues Adriana from IBM and Talak from Dow in Sao Paulo, who bring companies together to share best practices and are making a difference for the LGBT community in Brazil. We're working with Ruben and Hugo in Mexico with LGBT Confex to support the LGBT community and businesses and companies in Latin America and in Mexico. And we support, we continue to support the work of VJ from Intuit and Lakshmi and others who meet regularly in Bangalore 
to look for ways to support the LGBT community in India. This year we have two global fellows at Out and Equal. We have Chez from the Czech Republic and Jacob from China. Chez worked as a deputy minister in Prague, advocating for human rights for many years. And Chez worked to ensure that LGBT couples could adopt children. And after a lot of frustration, he finally realized that the government of the Czech Republic was simply not supportive. So he decided to work within the LGBT community to effect change and became the first executive director of Prague Pride. Well, in Pride's first year, the president of the Czech Republic made a public statement denouncing Pride and stating his extremely homophobic and anti-LGBT position. But this did not deter Chez. Instead, he turned this hateful statement from the leader of his own country into what is now the largest Pride celebration in a post-communist country. In Chez's first year, Prague Pride had 8,000 attendees. Go Chez! The first year, 8,000. This past year, there were 55,000 people at Prague Pride. So this support of LGBT rights, of course, is unheard of in post-communist countries and is a testament to Chez's vision and leadership. I'm proud to have him as a colleague at Out and Equal this year, and I know we will continue to work together toward full LGBT rights around the globe. Out and Equal was founded to make sure that everyone can bring our true, authentic selves to work every single day, whether we live in India or Indiana. Paris, France, or Paris, Texas. We come together this week 3,000 strong to share our stories, knowing that together we are creating workplaces filled with pride, with freedom, and with equality. Thank you for the work that you do every single day, making a difference and changing the world one cubicle and one workplace at a time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.